Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am at Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, 2015, March 28th. I am at Brown Tool Auction. Brown Tool Auction is one of the most famous uh, antique tool auction houses and they hold the world record in selling the, the most expensive antique tool, which was the Sandusky plow plane sold here for $114,000. You do not have to be physically here in order to bid on these items. You can just register with the Brown Antique Tool auction website and place your bids online. Meanwhile, sit back and enjoy. Сандаски. Клоплейн. Вот этот где-то будет за тысячу две она найдет. Box 
14, 14, 14, 14, all the way to 14, 1300 off, 165, right up front here, 165, about 220. 160, 180, have 160, now 180, 160, bid now 180, 160, only have to be now 180, 180, now 200, 200, now 220, 220, yes, 220, now 240, 260, 260, 260, 260, 260, 260, new bid now 280, 280, now 300, 300 here, 300, 300, 300, 320, 320, now 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 350, 375, 375, 375, 350, just in time. This should be an Thirty six hundred. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to show you this catalog that I got when I came in, and you can actually request one by mail. They'll just send it to you. Okay, so as you can see, the March 28th, 9 o'clock, Brown Tool Auction. And as you saw, you probably saw that plane sold for $2,600. And that, $3,000 or something like that. Okay. Then it goes um, by numbers. So there were 800 some items at that auction. I'll just page it slowly and if you need to magnify it you can probably put it in pause and see it. And I did take some notes later on. So I might be able to give you some details on a particular item. I came in around here because I was a little bit late and then I was taping the pre-auction so by the time I came the auction was somewhere in the low 100s. So most of the important stuff wasn't even uh, auctioned yet. I was trying to get this guy, I think it went out for like um, $160, something like that. And these guys went for, this one went for like 360 and one is went closer to 500 These angles went for like $60, the larger ones went for like $120.
the X's were going for for like over hundred dollars. Remember those X's went for um, commanded some price. I was surprised. And uh, these type of planes were not expensive. They were going for like fifty dollars, hundred bucks, two hundred dollars, based on the uh, manufacturer and other factors. Those things went for like over hundred dollars. That was that was kind of surprising to me. <laughs> and um, the plow planes went for over thousand dollars. Those were not the most expensive plow planes, but I'll show you later what was more expensive. And then I was uh, I started to jot down the prices that they were sold for. And for example, this number 20, 226 was sold for 300. That Lee Nelson chisel plane was sold for 175. Those guys were sold for 270, and this one for 210. And 230 to 31 Lee Nelsons were sold for I forgot like 300 some. There were not a lot of modern tools. That's just a group of Lee Nelson hand planes and a group of uh, Lazars in field modern hand planes. Must have been not more than 10 items total. Everything else was antique or very old. So that daily went for 650, 700, 60, 105 dollars was sold for. I'm starting to take notes because I thought I would be able to remember but then I realized it was just too much to memorize. This drill went for 155, of the group 254, uh, 165, 105, 150. This guy went for the pre war Norris, went for 450, 275, 135, 100, 325, 285. As you can see, the prices are quite reasonable. Of course, you have to add about 15%. Uh, commissions, uh, it's like a 10% commissions and plus the Pennsylvania taxes, about 15%. 115, 225, 140. I was surprised <laughs> that this rock went for 185. To me, from the distance, it just looked like a like a regular rock. I guess it is some sort of a tool. All right, uh, 110, 90, 135. It was a nicely looking nice looking um in field plane made by uh by the user went for two seventy five two hundred and a lot of these things were going to the absentees sometimes I made a note myself but the absentees were people who placed their beads online and I think they would have to pay like a little bit extra for for that. You pay three percent for, for your credit card payment and I might, they might, I, I'm not sure, but they might charge a little bit more for um, doing this um, as an absentee bids. Not positive. But when you're there, you on, if you pay by check or by credit, no, no, not the credit, if you pay by cash or check, you don't pay the 3%. If you pay by credit card, you will have to add 3%, which is reasonable. It's, a lot of people do that, kind of. Adjustment seventy dollars forty one ten seventy three hundred seventy five. This guy went for nine hundred, even though it was predicted for fifty to nine hundred. Because in most cases, uh, the predictions, the estimates were slightly overrated. In that case, it was not. Uh, that level that we saw on a larger picture went for twenty three hundred dollars. To me, didn't look impressive at all. Looked like a uh, like a piece of old. Well, it looked okay, but definitely I would never think that it would command such a price. Um, 675, 240, 135, 60, 60, 60, 200. Those little guys went for $20. They were not user made, but nicely made. So I was surprised. I was imp 
surprised that a lot of people were bidding on rulers and levels and measuring tools. There are quite a lot of collectors who collect this kind of stuff because um, those things would be going for hundreds of dollars, 115, 160, 115, 85, 130, 160, 70, 80, 70. This funky looking saw went for 105. Those things were tiny. I made myself a note to probably just about four or five inches. 125. 20 bucks. 60, 65. 95. 375. 110. 35. 20. 85. 55. 30. This one. 260. 25. 155. 210. 20 bucks. 85. 110. These things, um, they look like made out of ivory maybe. They, they were quite small, they were almost the same as they are on the picture. Maybe slightly larger. Because you can't really tell it by the picture. 175, 55, 190, 190. But quite a few people beating on this measuring of tools. I was impressed. I was glad. That thing went for, I think, $2,400. 85, 75, and another piece of this little tiny thing. They're, they literally were th that size. 245, 195, 85, 115, 55, 60, 210, 85, 70. And you can see the prices. That was getting a little bit more interesting. Um, the hemp planes. That was a real good guy. I, I was beating on it, but lost it. It's Bailey before he joined the Stanley Corporation. Pre Stanley Bailey compass plane. So the prediction was starting from 700, but it actually went for 450. I was kind of like holding myself back because I knew that I was going to beat on the, some Norris planes. All right, 825, 105, 90, 90, 105, 775. I was impressed. This guy was kind of went for a lot of money. 200, 155. Those work like a hundred to hundred dollars. All of these things, all this 85, 40, 300, 425, 110, 120 for two pole planes, 80, 30, 105, 150, 45, 70, 440. No, no, I must, must have made a mistake. 80 dollars, 30 dollars, 20, 45, 170. You can kind of see the prices here. Not not real high. Okay, the next page is an interesting page because um, I was expecting that this Sandusky plow plane would generate more activity because they were predicting up to fifty-two hundred dollars price for that plow plane, but it only gave them seventeen hundred dollars. And I think I was taping this one. Um, uh, that was a group of interesting modern planes made by Lazarus and I did get this guy so and more measuring tools 85 30 30 380 these two levels 125 50 145 to 10 70 45, 90, uh, 65, 30, 40, 100. And this is a guy that I was talking about earlier. The measuring tool went for $2,200. And let's see the prediction. Oh, the prediction was only up to 900. 450 to 900. Log, log caliber. And I was amazed because it didn't look that impressive to me at all. But I guess somebody really wanted it. 375, 250, 70, 80, 40, 55, 110, 170, 75, 85, 20, 135, 175, 185, 235. And those braces were very similar. And if you look at the description, maybe one had like a tiny crack or something. So that would kill the price. 
for the collectors. Uh, that was an interesting plane. I mean, it incurred a crazy price, $3,500, but um, it was made by some uh, religious uh, secludes. In 1817, there was some sort of a religious group from Germany that lived in the higher, I guess, I guess more the Amish people maybe, and um, so they were making this type of planes, and apparently they are rare. 700. 300, 450, 115, 150, 75, 135, 650, 115, 200, 210, 9, 110, that's nice, that was a nice looking Morris, 400, 160, 160, 210, was a little ni nice one with the box, 95, I was picking it up, in the pre-auction section of the video and those were the infills so this guy without the name went for 185 this noise went for 800 350 350 860 I think this guy went for um, 500 315 and um, get there are more measuring tools. I'm going to show you the noise a little bit later, and the Lazarus that I bought on, at that auction at the end of this presentation, and um, some more tools. And I was surprised that those axes were going for a pretty high price, as well as the saws, because of the other auction that I have a video on. Uh, at the patina auction, there were a lot of saws, and they were going for twenty, forty dollars. But, but of course, there are different ages, manufacturers, and but visually they look the same, and they were going for cheaper. But I know that this auction is much more premium, so they probably wouldn't even allow some of the cheaper versions here. And that was a user-made, nice-looking plane. So 1780 went for $320, 100, 275, 475, 1600 with microscope. And all tools were like in excellent condition. You didn't have anything that was real rusty or ugly looking. Everything was very, very good. 240, 240, 185, that's some sort of a horse stuff, 110, 150, almost got this guy, but somebody outbid me, that was a nice looking wheel, but about that, that big, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, those blow torches from Sweden went to the same guy who was bidding online, 150, 160, nice. I, I would love to buy them, but I already spent my money on my Norris at that point. Just trying to hold myself back. Okay, 320, 220, 130, 200, 250, 320, 150. No, I'm sorry, that was the price range, and I didn't record it. Actually, I, remem I do remember what it was. It was 210. There's number 2 Stanley. Okay. More hand planes. That was an interesting looking plane. It, it didn't go for much. Remember, it was the end of the auction. It must have been like maybe $200, something like that. Maybe three. Those were a little cheaper, they were like a few hundred dollars, maybe two hundred dollars, not not very expensive. This guy went for 120, 425. John Ho Holland's infield plane, he was one of the renowned infield plane makers way before Norris. He was uh, 
19th century from 60s to 90s. He existed for about 30 years and he was a, an excellent quality. He's less renowned than other guys like Norris, but some people consider him one of the best in the field plane makers. That book is has an interesting story. This guy published his book, then I think he went through the divorce with his wife and in order to make it worse for her, he stopped publishing this book so that she wouldn't get fifty percent and that book's price went up to up to two hundred dollars. So you can buy it for let's see how much it would be now. Yeah, hundred to two hundred. And the original price was like it might be thirty, forty dollars. Seven hundreds. They were just selling groups of block planes and hammers and measuring tools. Yeah, I think at, this, at that point I left because I wasn't interested in any of those guys. Okay, so it looks like they're gonna have another auction in October 30th and 31st, in 2015. So I think they have two um, live auctions a year, and they have at least three more online auctions at York, I think they do it. So altogether I understood there are about five or six auctions a year. But these two, uh, the one that I showed you and the one that is going to take place uh, in October at the Camp Hill, uh, are the most premium. They are more geared towards collectors. The other auctions are slightly more geared towards the users. That, that's what I was explained. So definitely check this out. And if you sign up for the auctions uh, newsletter, you'll be getting updates. And, I and those were my trophies. And in conclusion, I would like to emphasize that it was not a promotional video. I am not associated with Brown Tool Auction in any form or shape. I just like them. I like the way they treated me. And I like what they sell. Hope to see you again on my channel. Goodbye.